morning, I know you give them a fresh anointing. So just open our minds to receive them and keep us faithful. And may somebody this morning get something out of the message, or each and every one of us get something out of the message this morning, so we can go and share with others. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. And the privilege is mine this morning again to introduce Pastor Sam, who is no stranger to us. He brought us a word yesterday, and he's here back this morning to give us a double portion of his, what thus said the Lord on his heart. So... Let us open our heart to receive Pastor Michael Samney. He's from Nigeria. He's a husband. He's a father. And more importantly, he's a man of God. So help me to welcome Pastor Michael Samney. The floor is yours, sir. Pastor Samney, good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We thank God for another time in his presence we give glory to god uh for keeping yes. us alive we thank god for giving us a new life uh we say thank you father we here yeah, we come O oh lord because you are our father we want you to minister your word through us to us through me O oh lord i want you O oh lord to use me mightily this morning father lord be thou exalted in jesus name Father Lord, as we go into your word, O oh Lord, open us to a new revelation in your word. Let us see you anew this morning. Father Lord, don't let us go astray from you, O oh Lord. Give us concentration and focus into your word. We thank you because you have answered us in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, Dr. Tamia, good morning, Bishop. Sister Ivy, good morning. Good morning, everybody in unity with that world. Good morning. We thank God for another time in His presence. Uh, we and uh, I say Merry Christmas in advance. We are in the jollification of Christmas preparation and every other things that we are doing. Uh, we I pray that this this Christmas will be a successful one for us. God will manifest His power in our life in Jesus' name. So this morning, what God laid upon my heart is that we should discuss the power of seeing and believing. The power of seeing and believing. Uh, the basis of Christianity is in the world. As they are spoken in my heart, so will I do. That is what God says. As they are spoken. So what we are telling God is what God is going to do for us. And most of the time, we don't see that way. We have so many things that we that we say without even thinking about it, and then it happens, and we we always attribute it to uh, the evil ones that say, or somebody that is, is, is caused by somebody. No, most of the things that happens to us are the result of what is stored in us, not outside of us. Nothing is outside of man. Everything is inside of man. And if we can just walk together this morning and focus on the word of God, then we will see how we can change everything that is happening or that has happened to us through the same power of word that created it. And I will take the today's reading from Mark 11. Jesus was the one speaking here. Ah. Uh, Mark 11, I want to read from verses 23. Or oh, we can go a little bit. Yes, 23. Uh, Jesus said, I'm going to read the Amplify Classic. Truly I tell you, who ever said to this mountain, be lifted up and throw into the sea, and does not doubt, at all in his heart, but believe that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason, I for this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, you will get it. Hallelujah. He said, I truly I tell you, whoever says Whoever says to this mountain, 
in this even at uh, this time we are we are always saying something whether in prayer in meditation in any 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 time we go by the uh, by ourselves we are saying something but what we want to look at is he said the jesus told us that he that says this and believe two things that we need to consider he said that truly i say unto you that if you say to the mountain be lifted and believe that what he says in in his heart will, will take place whatever you say whatever you say we believe it that it will take place that it shall be done unto him hallelujah so it's not then how why are we not getting or receiving answers to our prayers when they say that oh if we say it i will believe it then we are going to get it but there's a clause there i want us to look at the clause then we look at the saying and the believing he gave us a clause and the clause is that and does not doubt at all in his heart most of the time we think when we when when we don't receive things from god maybe it's it's, it's god that is not answering our prayer or or or, or we or we doubt we are looking at look looking at it so that maybe we are doubting the power of god there has never been a time that the power of god can be doubted if we look at what jesus said here he said that and does and doubt not in his heart so that means that the doubt we are talking about is in everybody's heart not in the situation not in the word you are saying but it has been a, it has been stored in us and funny enough the same power or the same key that brings forth faith is the same key that bring forth the doubt the same thing and i always like to do some little ar arithmetic when it comes to the word of god he said that if we say it and believe it and we don't have any doubt within us then we are going to receive whatever we ask from god so that means that there's a place we need to work on and that is our heart he said that the, and we, if we don't doubt in our own heart, is anything that we, anytime we want to ask things from God, especially something that we know is higher than us, there is tendency for doubt to arouse. Why? Because we are looking at our own capacity. Any revelation that God has given, everything that God has given unto us, every every vision of God, if the vision of God, if that vision does not beat your imagination, is not from God. If what God has given unto you you pray or you meditate you, you you are meditating and god lays something upon uh, in your heart as a vision and that vision can still be taken you can still make those visions possible within your resources it's not yet the vision of god every vision of god must beat your present capacity must be bigger than you and once it, once those visions are bigger than you, then what happens? Doubt will come. Will I be able to do it? And where do we get doubt? So we have two things we need to look at. Those two things are very, very important. And the same, those two things is the one that we, still, we are going to use to get everything possible. Jesus referred to the heart. That if we don't doubt in our own heart, that what we are saying will become possible, then we will receive it. Two 
things that I said I want to want us to look at is the mind and the heart. Jesus was not referring to the to the to the mind now, but he said our heart. Why is the doubt in our heart and not in our mind? Our mind is just a door. It's the door that makes things come into our heart. We have power. It was second to change what is in our mind. But it can take a lifetime to change what is in your heart. Because our mind is like just when you are writing a program on a system. You can, if you made a mistake, you can, you can, you can put it off and rewrite it. But as soon as you put, you save it and it goes into the hard disk. Before you can change that thing that you have stored in, your, in, your, in the hard disk, you need to recall it back. You need to what to recall it back. And before you can recall it back, you must have a better things to, to recall it back. If you don't have that power to recall it back, it will stay there. So most of the things that are stored in our, in our hearts are, the, are what came in through our mind. That, oh, I can't do this. I can't make this. Oh, it is not possible. Those words we kept on saying, and it's going, in, we are seeing it in our mind, then go back into our hearts and store there. So every time we have been faced with any vision that is bigger than us, the first thing that will come is what is stored in our hearts. Because our heart wants to compare it with our capacity. What we store there, an hard disk that can just take one gig, is not going to be the same one that would take one trillion gig, because it that means that before it can take that in it and the expansion, or you change that hard disk, the same thing happens. Our app will first, will first look at what is stored in it, compare it what we are seeing. Is it true? Do I need to take it and it, what it will bring back to our memory is those doubts that we have stored in our hearts, not in our mind. And the same, I said that the same key that we have been using all this while, I can't make it. I can't do it. Oh, it is too big for me. Oh, I can't. Oh, no. Sometimes we, we, we jokingly say a ne ne negative word and we don't believe that those negative words are so powerful. And we look at it as just a, a passing word. There's no passing word. Everything that we say it and when we say it, it goes into our ears and, our way, and when it goes there, the, the brain interprets what we're saying by picture. And as soon as the picture is able to go into our mind, then it gets stored there. Anytime we see things or that is contrary, it will bring it forth. It will bring that thing that we have written in our heart forth. And that is what happens to us. That is what the, the, where Jesus said we should go and walk on. If we don't doubt in our own hearts, we keep on saying it. And how do we, uh, what are we saying now? The key that makes us to have negativity in our hearts is the repetition. We keep on repeating the same thing over and over, over and over. Negative words that we keep on saying to ourselves or, to some, or somebody suggested it unto us and we agreed unto it. The first place it comes is, is, is our mind. And when those people that gave us those words are not there, then our mind will recall it back. When you are sitting down, it will recall it back onto you. And the more you now start, oh, she said I'm not beautiful. The person that, has, that said that to you has left. But you are still, now you are now thinking about it. Oh, oh, are, because he said that the clothes I put on is not beautiful then. 
the more we keep on thinking, having those thoughts in our mind, then it will not come down into our hearts through a process. Our conscious and the subconscious, the two work together. When it, when it is still in our conscious mind, when we can still see it, when we can see, see those things, we have power to change it. But as soon as it goes down, because of the repetition, repetition, repetition of the same thing that we had, or we keep on saying to ourselves, and it goes down into our heart, then it, be, it becomes dangerous. So, every doubt is not from outside realm. It's from inside. And that is why Jesus said that from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it's not only speaking alone. Our action is done by the thing that has been stored in our hearts. And he said that saying it and believing it is what will lead, will, will lead us to the realization of what we are saying. How? The vision that God has given unto us. What God wants us to, to, to tell him is that to keep on saying it to him. To keep on repeating it unto him. To keep on saying that word unto him. That word invariably, if we confess it long enough, it will go down and neutralize that doubt that is in us. Oh, what happens to, to Peter when he was walking? It was not, it, 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 was, it, it wasn't when it entered that river or when he stepped, he stepped his, his leg on the river that the waves, the waves was there even when he was in the boat. When Jesus was asking him to come, the wave was there. But as soon as he entertained, he allowed the one that has been stored, the waves that has been stored in his heart to come forth into his memory, then he realized the one that was outside. It was the one inside that brought forth the one that was outside. The wave was, has been there. But if he kept on seeing Christ, the wave would not, he wouldn't have time to go back into what is stored in his, in his, in his, in his heart to bring that forth. And then that one will now make him to see the physical one. And as soon as he left his focus, the doubt, the thing that was inside of him came forth. And it produces that physical waves that he saw. Then he started sinking. Everything is in our hearts, not outside of us. So when we say that, when he said that, we should keep on saying, on saying it and believing it. He's telling us that we have some things within ourselves. Everything that God has, God wanted us to achieve, has been created in the spiritual realm. He has given us all heavenly blessings. In the spiritual realm. So, it's not the any vision we are, God is giving unto us. It's not a new vision to God. The vision has been there. So, the vision is always with us. But what are we talking about now? We are the one that needs to bring forth those vision into realization by the power of our mouth. By the word we, by, by the word we speak out. Oh, let us see what is uh, what, what is said in uh, Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, we have it. Romans chapter 4. What? There's a word there that I want us to look at. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and speak to and speak of the non-existent things that he has foretold 
and promised as if they already existed. In Genesis 17.5, he told him, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And now, what happens? Abraham was still, is, is, those things are it's not yet within, within his reach. But he kept on confessing those words. He kept on. Because it's not, the God has already made it. They, God pronounced that word unto him. He has made him a father of many nations. But the realization of those things still needs his heart to believe it. And the heart will not believe until we keep on repeating the word that God has spoken unto us. And until we keep on saying it, saying it, and saying it, said faith cometh by hearing and hearing. So if faith cometh by hearing, that means there must be an audible thing that you need to hear. He kept on confessing it. He kept on saying it until he was fully persuaded. Oh, we need to understand that word. He was fully persuaded. That means that until that word that was spoken to him by God, the revelation, the vision, until he himself got the realization fully persuaded, that means that he was able to change his heart, to see it, that it is true. Then it was that was when the vision came alive. That was when the vision of God that he gave unto Abraham came alive. He himself, we need to be persuaded. We need to get those things that he said unto us by, the, by repeating it. Oh, by repeating it. When we keep on saying it, confessing it, claiming it, sometimes we, we, we go before the Lord in prayer with about thousands of requests and we leave that place unfulfilled jesus will always go every morning to meet his father with one request father what do i need to do today how do i need to go about it and he said as i hear my father speaks so i do as i hear him as I see him, as I see what he's doing, so, so I will go back and do it. So that means that he always has one request every time to meet him. And he will be there until he himself is fully persuaded and then the answer will come before he leaves. And every time he gets, he comes out of it, what happens? Miracle. And if we are not persuaded, we cannot get anything because the doubt is still in our hearts. The, to, we need to use that word to keep on confessing it, confessing, confessing it until we neutralize what is being stored in our hearts. Until that thing that the, the negativity, oh, oh, I don't have that power to do it. God gave you a vision of one thousand one million dollars projects or 10 million pro thousand projects for evangelism and you don't have a dime what we what will come in your heart is this oh how will i do it anytime please note this anytime we go by how do i that is when the doubt comes in. Mary said, how will this happen? That is doubting it that he, she looked at as physical person. I'm not married. I don't, uh, I'm just been, uh, 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 has just been given to, to a man, but I've not, I've not packed to, to, to his house. He has not even slept with me. How will I conceive? He was, she was looking at how and then the angel was able to change that out. That the owl is not your job. The owl is not your job. What is your what your job is is for you to accept it even in your heart. 
and keep and look at it that he that promises will do it. When we confess, when we keep on saying it, we need to believe it. But we don't need to look at how. Anytime we look at how, we are going to doubt ourselves. And once we doubt ourselves, we are going to start falling down. And that is, if you look at this, this equation, Jesus did not discuss about how it's going to be happen. He said, it's just so that you just say it. But don't entertain that meaning that the doubt is how. Don't entertain how will it be done. Just keep on believing it. Be saying it and be believing it. Your, your, your own job in this equation is to say and believe it will happen. Say and believe it will happen. Say it and believe it happens. Leave the how. Oh, Peter was walking on the water and, and he thought, how am I walking on the water? Am I, am I an angel? And I started sinking. Anytime you entertain, how will it happen? There will be a problem in the equation. And that is why it does not doubt in his heart. Is you don't focus on how. Focus on that vision and believe that he that promises will fulfill it. And thank God for Elizabeth. When she was speaking with Mary in a, uh, she confirmed things that there shall be a performance of the thing that is being spoken by God. There shall be a performance. And immediately, she caught that vision and she magnified God. The vision of God for us is to confess what he has given unto us and believe it. Anytime you are looking at how will this one be, be like this, how will it happen? Because of human, because of the level of our, of the level where we are, we are going to sing. And our, the, the, our mind will give us our capacity. Your mind, my mind, can only go beyond when we use the word of God on it. If we are just looking at the vision God has given unto us and we want to look at our present level, then we will always be having that doubt. The word that and does not doubt in its heart means don't look for how will it happen. Don't look for how will this one be possible. Anytime we entertain how doubt will come in. There's no way we can do that. Because we want to look at what can our brain, what can our brain, what, how can we justify it? God look at, he gave you a vision of having a city. And you, have, you, are still living, you are still living in an apartment. And you want to start thinking, maybe I should go and get a loan. Maybe I should go and speak with one person. Is that a revelation from him? No. The revelation comes when you believe. When you believe. When you believe. When you keep on confessing it. And you keep on saying it. The power is that he called those things that be not as if they were. He, Abraham was not just sitting down because God said, told him he's the father of nation. He was, he was saying it. He was calling things that be not as if they were. He was saying it. That is what the Bible just said. That, that he, was, he was saying it as if those things that, has been, that, that God told him, yo, that thing is going to happen. And he was not doubting in his heart. So if you, if, if you look at that 19, uh, yes, the, uh, Romans chapter 4, 19, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. That is it. He did not consider he was not looking at how will it happen. And oh, my, my body is, 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 is now old. So it said that it was not, I'm still reading Romans chapter 4, so verse 19. So he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about an hundred years 
and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through what? Unbelief. Unbelief will set in when we look at how. But when we keep on confessing it, saying it, believing it, in the equation is three things that we have the, that today. We are to do two, what God will do the, the last one, then we then receive. We are to say it. God is not going to say that say it for us. We have to believe it. God is not going to believe it for us. But when we believe it, when we say it and believe it, when we say it and believe it, God will do the how. But we want to we was we want to do the three by ourselves, and that is where issues comes in. He did not ask us to do the how. He asked us to do the believing and the saying. And Jesus did not say the how you should now start looking for. He said that if you say it and do it and believe it, you will receive it. Hallelujah. So we are still on that uh, Romans chapter four, so nineteen. I said that um, twenty said he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. What is the meaning of giving to the glory? He kept on saying the same thing that God has given him. Thanking God, uh, thanking God that, oh God, I thank you because you have done this for me. You have done it. You have done it. You have done it. You have done it. You have made it. You made me the father of many nations. Oh, then look at what he said. He said, giving glory to God. Verse 21. And being fully convinced that what he had promised he was also able to perform it and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness and when he was fully convinced you cannot convince those things that has been stored in your heart or by just saying oh th father lord i thank you because you you gave me this vision oh be that exalted and you go away you are just deceiving yourself you need to keep on claiming it saying it oh most of us we want we can we, we can be in in, in, uh, in one hour prayer saying two three five ten four four uh, twenty things different in uh, in different form and we leave the prayer and say oh we thank god because uh today is we we spent two hours in prayer let me tell you something you have not spent two hours in prayer you, are, you only said two hours in so many things that you are talking to god you can spend two those two hours telling god you said it you have to perform it it's not you are not trying to change God, you are trying to change yourself to believe what God said. When you keep on saying it, look at this. So he said when he was fully persuaded, he convinced himself that what God said by what by saying it and believing it, by saying it and believing it, by saying it. I'm believing it by saying it. I'm believing it. Keep on, he kept on saying it and he kept on making the word. God will call me father of many nations. I'm a father of many nations. I am father. He was not talking so many other things. He was only saying that word until he was able to reprogram. If I have to use the technical word, he reprogram his mind. And as because everything we come, we keep on saying in our in, to ourselves. We become deposited in our hearts. That it was able to neutralize those names that they gave to him, Father. Then he was able to convert that Father to Father of many nations by the repetition of the Word of God and believing it and kept on saying it. Kept on saying it. He, he, he didn't stop. He was not saying five fifty things at the same time. He just hold on to that promise. He hold on, he held on to it, and he kept on saying it. And the power of saying and believing is that it will take those things that have been deposited, that negated the word of God. That is just the purpose. It's a way of just reprogramming your system. When you have a wrong program running, you either format it, or if that program needs to be written, then you bring it forth and rewrite those things that is was wrong. Then you now save it back. Then your system will now work. 
if you have a combination of a program, two programs running together, you make half of Microsoft and you make half of Apple and you join them together and you want you to run it on the system. Don't know, don't you know that that system will give you will be giving you error? But what do you need to do if you want to run one program? You have to just pick one. If it is Microsoft you want to run, then the Windows just put it on the system and you see that it will, it will not come alive. Most of the time we jump pack our prayer points, our sayings with so many things that are not, they are not, uh, let me put it this way, they, they don't follow each other. They are two, three, five different things that we want, we want to combine them together and it makes us not to focus on what we are saying. But the way of saying, of making things happen is you confess it and believe it and keep on saying it until the result comes in. And you can only get a result where? In your, until you believe and convince yourself. This morning, the power is this. That if we just kept on, we just keep on saying it. The vision of God doesn't matter how big those visions are. Don't look at how. How we set out the doubt in you. Anytime you put how, will this happen? There's going to be a problem on that, uh, on that thing. So just your own part of the equation is you say it and believe. Leave the out for God. And I pray this morning, as we look at those revelations God has God is giving us or has given unto us that, that has never been performed, and we go back and revisit those ones and confess it and keep on saying it and believe it, and we know that we stop looking at how will it happen, then we will see the realization of the power of God in our life. The key is you say it and believe it and leave the hour for God. May God help us as we keep on saying the word of God, confessing it, and to convince ourselves, to be fully persuaded, and then the realization of what he has said unto us will be fulfilled in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning.